Hi everyone, Materium here with a special battle report. As part of Vince Venturella's Warhammer World Tour, he came over to visit us, and I did one narrative game with him, but this is the actual game I challenged him to. Uh, his Tomb Kings versus my Lizard Men. Now you may notice from the screen it says there's a points discrepancy. Uh, that is because uh, there was a little miscommunication. I had told Vince that I was only capable of fielding uh, 2,000 points of lizard men. I guess he grabbed the wrong list or maybe misunderstood. So he brought 2,500 points of lizard men to this game. And because we were playing closed list, I didn't check it. So we didn't actually realize that we had done this until much, much later in the day. So I am playing this game at a 500 point deficit. Uh, but it was a good game. We'll see how it goes and get into deployment. So the Tomb Kings have their stuff pretty tightly crowded up. We have a unit of three Kyrian. Uh, behind that is a unit of ten archers with his level four Hierophant to the lore of Nehekara. Then behind that is a uh, Skull Catapult. Then he has a big unit of uh, six chariots with his Tomb King, who is kitted out. I don't quite remember what he had, but uh, he did have the sort of anti-heroes and a four-up ward, uh, and a Tomb Herald in it. Behind that is his Casket of Skulls. Then there's a unit of Snake Surfers, um, and a Skull Catapult behind that. And then the, behind the building here, he has another unit of, uh, I think it's six or eight chariots, with a Tomb Prince, which is being subbed in by my Corpse Cart, because he doesn't have enough chariots with him, and a Herald in that unit as well. So very character heavy, um, but should be interesting. Very, very chariot heavy, but I think it'll be fun. Um, so I start off over here. This is after Vanguards. You can see I've got my unit of skir Skink Skirmishers, which I put up there because I forgot about the Tomb Kings never taking penalties to hit. I also have a Skink Chief on a Ripper Dactyl out there by himself. Uh, figure those Skull Catapults could be a problem to me, so I'm sending two ways to, to get in there and deal with them. Then in my main force, I have my Ancient Stegodon with Blowpipes. My 32 Saurus Warriors with Spears full command. There is two Scarvets in there, one with a Halberd and the 6-up Ward save versus a War Machine's item. The other one has Hand Weapon and Shield and the Sacred Stegodon Helm. Then I have my Slon, who is Lore Master to uh, High Magic. He also has the three channels at 5-up. Um, he's Ethereal... And, uh, I think that's all I gave him. And then next to that is my Bastilladon. Oh, the Slon is also my BSB and General, but... Uh, then we go over here, I have my, uh, Salamander unit. I have a unit of ten Skink Skirmishers with blowguns. Then on the other side of the forest, I have ten more Skink Skirmishers with blowguns. And a level two Skink Priest to the Lore of Heavens. Uh, he is a scroll caddy. I do have a dispel scroll in this army. So Tomb Kings gets first turn, and there's very little movement. Uh, his carrion kind of reform to stare at my skink priest that's coming, and the archers uh, reform and move a little bit so that they're staring down the skink skirmishers. That was all movement, so during magic, uh, <laughs> my opponent manages to bubble the five up ward save on pretty much everything over the hair, which as you can see he is very much a fan of. And then during shooting his archers kill four out of five of my chameleon skinks. Those skinks die in droves when your enemy doesn't take penalties to shoot. Uh, that's just absolutely terrible. Um, but it's it me being dumb for forgetting that they have that rule so I can't blame him for taking advantage of it. So my first turn, and I decide I need to get up there as soon as I can. He's got range superiority on me, and I need to not have that happen. Uh, my 
pre or my chief on the Ripperdactyl tries to charge his carrion and fails and moves up there. The ancient Steg moves up hard. So do the Saurus warriors. I am using that uh, that Griffin statue in the middle. There is a altar of Sigmar, which we have ruled impassable. So I'm using that to shield my Slon from his chariot charge. Then over here, you see everything else is moving up pretty good. I don't want to give him an easy charge with those chariots, uh, but I do want to get to the point where the skinks will be able to move around them and start poisoning them. Um, but I've got to be very careful because he's got the movement banner in that unit, so they're move crazy move for chariots. And uh, if he starts just hitting units, he's going to delete them with that big a block. And you can barely see this, but I think it's fitting because he's blending in so well. Um, the... Skink Chameleon is moving up. I'm trying to put a wound or so on the uh, Skull Chariot, or the Skull Catapult before he gets killed. So that's really my only aim there. And then during shooting, uh, my Skink Chameleon shows that he is Ninja and ends up doing two wounds to the S Skull Catapult with two shots. One was poison, one was normal, and then I needed a six to wound and wounded him so that was pretty awesome even though that poor little bastard is absolutely dead once he focuses any attention on him so we go into tomb kings turn two the carrion decide to go ahead and charge my skink priest on the ripper to go ahead and deal with him unfortunately where they're standing that puts him just past where my stegodon can see so i can't bring the stegodon in to help at all and then the rest of his movement was very, very small. Um, biggest thing to note is he did move out the chariots a little bit. He's getting it so that I really don't have a way of closing in with the skinks and remaining out of his line of sight. So that was pretty wise there. So then during magic, I stop the five up ward spell, but he manages to get off the additional attack spell on everything in that bubble, uh, which is just unfortunate. And then with the 80 billion attacks, these archers now have my poor Skink Skirmisher, or Skink Chameleon dies. He also uses the shooting on his chariots to do a decent amount to the Salamander. He's killed two of the handlers and put two wounds on the Salamander, so he only has one wound left. Not good, being that I really haven't even gotten to breathe fire with him yet. And then he shoots at these Skinks with this chariot group and inflicts a single wound. So we go into combat, and the Skink Priest shows his worth. Um, I do have a 2-up armor save on him, so it is kind of hard to hurt him. But uh, these Carrion are just not getting it done, and between him and the Ripper, I'm tearing him up. Uh, I end up doing killing one of the, the Carrion, and I think I win by one. Uh, so he takes a wound on another one, but it's definitely going in my direction. So we go into my turn two, um, I go ahead and move the Ancient Steg around, I'm aiming to either go for those archers or to hit something tasty in the flank, because uh, if I can get rid of those archers, which includes his Hierophant, that could swing things immensely in my direction. Uh, I'm keeping the Slon covered by the uh, impassable terrain, but I move up my Saurus to basically be a nice big target for his chariots to go into. Uh, then on this side, I send up the uh, Salamander up to do some fire breathing in that direction, but I kind of screw up here. As you can see with the angle, I wasn't really, I guess I wasn't thinking about the Snake Surfers having such a long charge range, but I've lined them up so that if they hit it, they can go through it and get into my Bastilodon and maybe even my Salon. So it was just absolutely bad for me. And then I pulled the other Skinks back. As you can see in both these pictures, uh, I'm wanting, not wanting to give him the ability to kind of charge and just kind of bounce through units, so I want to back up and, and make him have to come out and play. He holds down my magic again. Uh, my shooting the blowpipes take out a couple more of the uh, archers, but other than that, not a whole lot gets done. But then we go into combat, and my... Uh, Skink Priest on the Ripper just absolutely tears apart those carrion, so uh, points for me. Yay! <laughs> yeah, and here's just a better picture of what that unit is left at 
uh, once the blowguns get done with them. I think it looks like there's one or two skeletons maybe in his Hierophant, and that's about it. So we go to uh, Tomb King's turn, and I think he actually charged my Salamander with those chariots, and I chose to flee, because again, I don't want to give him any easy shots, uh, and he either failed to redirect or chose not to make it, or maybe not, didn't have anything he could see, I don't quite recall, but uh, Salamander ends up behind my Slon here after he finishes his flea. And then in a much more successful charge, the chariots with his Tomb King and Herald uh, come slamming right into the front of the Saurus block. Uh, I know I'm taking just a crazy number of impact hits here, but my ultimate hope is that I can hold out. I have two Scarvets in that unit, and they're very killy. Uh, I'm hoping I can win a War of Attrition, uh, but I've got to not die to impact hits first. And I forgot to talk about him, but he does actually have one Scorpion who manages to come onto the board this turn uh, to pick up the points for the Salamander and kind of get into my backfield and be a general nuisance with himself. And here is where those Chariots ended up after their failed charge. So during the magic phase, the casket goes off and absolutely explodes my little Skink Priest, or Skink Chief here. Luckily, I'm too far away for it to bounce to anything else. Then during shooting, he manages to put, uh, to kill the last handler on the salamander, but the salamander succeeded the leadership role for the monster, uh, the monster reaction check, which makes sense considering he's all of two inches behind the salon. And then in combat, all the death happens. Uh, he kills, God, that must be three two and a half ranks of Saurus, maybe more. Um, but luckily, I do some good wounds back on him uh, with the the uh, Saurus characters, and he does not get me enough where I'm not steadfast, and leadership nine re-rollable with, with Lizard Men is easy to make. Um, so, uh, oh, the other thing that he had done was moved up a single skeleton in front of my... The, the, what was left of that skeleton archers in front of my Steganon. So we go to my turn and I charge that, set myself to a perfect overrun if I can kill that and hit the uh, skull catapult, which the skull catapults have been trying to shoot my slon and just failing all game. Uh, the slon, I figure I need to, to move back. I can't have him get charged because even that carrion is going to open him up. So, uh, the Salamander rallies and looks at the, the carry, and I move forth the Bastilodon to just kind of be a general nuisance and block things up, hoping that a double charge on that would be more attractive than him bringing the chariots around to chase down the Slon, who is not going to be able to escape from him. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for there. Uh, and then over here, I finally get my opportunity to bring all of the Skinks around into the flank of these chariots. And I just need to rain poison attacks down on these undead and thin this unit out very, very quickly. Um, you'll notice there's one kind of out by himself on that terrain piece. That's actually where that whole second unit is. I just couldn't balance them there. And again, magic is doing very little. So during the shooting phase, I, uh, I think I kill one chariot here with the combined shooting, which is good. It's just not enough. I need, I need more. I need my magic to start coming through for me. Then in the first combat, the Stegodon obviously destroys the two skeletons that are left, manages to get a great overrun and slam right into the uh, the Skull Chariot, or the Skull Catapult, um, and his Hierophant is still there, and at this point, if I can kill that Skull catapult and turn around she's not going to be able to avoid me next turn so certainly looking forward to that um now things start going my way um in this big combat he kills looks like another four saurus but my saurus uh champion or my saurus characters are going to town even the saurus are doing damage i kill the tomb herald off the top of his unit and three chariots this turn um, and things are certainly starting to go my way. So we go into Tomb King's turn, and the uh, Tomb Scorpion charges the front of my Salamander. I decide to go ahead and stay, because I don't want him redirecting into the Salon. 
And then everybody decides to go party at the Bastilladon's house. Um, I took a flank charge with the chariots, front charge with the uh, uh, knights. Amusingly, I actually stood and shot at the knights, and with the three javelins on the back of the guys, I actually managed to put a wound on them. So <laughs> I feel pretty happy, even though I'm almost certain that my Bastilladon is going to die a horrible death. And I hold his magic down, his shooting really doesn't have much left, he's still failing to hit my Slon with the catapult, and combat we go to, and the Bastilladon just explodes. Uh, he does choose to overrun with the knights, hoping to get into the salamander fight, and is off by like half an inch. Um, so, he he's not there, and my Slon is in terrible trouble with those guys coming up on him. Particularly now that the second fight goes badly for me and the uh, Carrion, or not the Carrion, the Scorpion kills my, bes uh, my Salamander and I inflict nothing back on him. So I gotta get out of there. I mean, I know the Slon is uh, ethereal, but even with basic combat res, these guys are gonna beat me because the Slon is not gonna get wounds on anything. And needless to say, on his turn, my Stegodon killed his catapult and reformed. So we go into my turn, and Stegodon charges his uh, Hierophant, who stands there, but she's just going to explode on impact hits. And my Skinks move around the back to do some more harassing. This, uh, uh, upon reconsideration, was probably a mistake. I probably should have moved them around to the front to just get in the way of things and clog up his movement, but... I'm still <laughs> getting used to the idea of Skinks being this kind of disposable unit that you can just throw at the enemy as a speed bump. So I didn't do that. I'm still trying to use them to generate wounds. And I just noticed I didn't talk about the Saurus uh, chariot fight last turn. But he's slowly pinging them down. I can't hit his his king. And I think that's about all he's got in that fight now. Um, but it's definitely momentum is swinging to our side and we're winning. Uh, but now I've come around here with the Slon, hoping to get some magic off. My magic has been decidedly lackluster all game. I need it to come through for me in a big way right now. And it does. I've been switching out spells as I get a, little spells that I've been getting off that haven't had much of an effect. And I got Shem's Burning Gaze, and I think that's the one where I can pump it to Strength 6 from, from the Lore of Light. And so I open up on the side of the Snake Surfers, and with the 2d6 hits I or 2d6 shots I get, I roll 11, and I wounded with 10, and he armor saved one, so they were gone. Uh, then in combat over here, I obviously smoke his uh, Priestess, which is super awesome, and I overrun. I th I think I may hit the, or maybe this is after overrun, I don't recall. But yeah, so she, she gets splattered, and now I have actual magical superiority, so that might be good for me. And we go to the combat here. I did get the uh, uh, Hand of Glory off to increase all the stats of my source by one, um, and... We're basically doing nothing. I can't hurt his, his king. I probably should have been using the normal attacks from the unit to attack the chariot out from under him, but I wasn't thinking. Uh, but his king is also not doing... I mean, he's whipping like crazy. Uh, he might be doing one wound a turn, and, and it's just not enough. Uh, but then, on his turn, he decides to even things up a little bit and charges the herald and the tomb prince out of his chariot unit because they can get around the edge of that dangerous terrain, whereas the whole, or not, impassable terrain, whereas the whole unit cannot. So he runs in, clips the side of me there, and that fight becomes much more troublesome. And then over here, the scorpion is just getting the heck out of dodge, because he doesn't want to mix it up with that slon after he saw what he did to the unit of snake surfers. So then during combat, uh, I do finally kill his Tomb King and Chariot. Uh, however, the guys in the side were more than enough to give him the combat res needed to break me. Um, so they were broken and run down, but I did get his General and Tomb King uh, before it went down. 
So during my turn six, I charge the Stegodon into the catapult at the top of the screen, and I'm basically just focused on trying to get points out of this chariot unit now that the characters have exited it. And yeah, I guess that's just a better look at me trying to kill his skull catapult at the top. And I gotta say, I tried my best. With magic and all the shooting I got, I did get this unit down to two chariots with only one wound, I think, on one of them. So I did a lot of output, just not enough to get the points for the unit. And of course, during combat, Stegodon kills the uh, other catapult and turns around to mug for the camera. And so we total it up at the end, and it turns out to be a victory for the Lizardmen by about 300 points as we factored it in at the time. However, once we realized at the end of the day that we had I had played at a 500 point deficit that ended up making my victory by approximately 800 points. Um, so uh, definitely a good showing for the lizard men. I gotta say, I love this game. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, it, I don't get to play the tomb Kings often, and I certainly don't get to play against this many freaking chariots. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm, I definitely feel like I'm learning some things about uh, the two, the the lizard man and how to work with them. And my opponent learned some things about how to play the game. Um, <laughs> uh, Vince, uh, th there were several things that there were some some rules confusion on, and and it did prove to me that doing these battle reports has definitely made me have a far stronger grip of the rules than I would be if I didn't have them. Uh, when you make a mistake and you have a billion people reaching out and throwing comments in your face that you got it wrong, it really teaches you to get everything right. So uh, it was just kind of funny that <laughs> uh, certain things were just done wrong. And then and, and that I've learned so much from doing these battle reports. Uh, this being the first game with my Stegadon, he is freaking amazing. Um, I wish I could have gotten him into something a little more meaty, but he was certainly causing all sorts of trouble there in the backfield. Uh, I also really like the Skink Chief on the Ripper. He's a good small unit chaff hunter, uh, war machine hunter, stuff like that. So I may be experimenting with that more <coughs> as, as I go through and play the army. Um, and this was the first time I had ever, or no, the second time, because I did play a practice game with Michael the night before. Uh, only the second time I've ever played the Slon. And uh, I'm going to have to learn how to use high magic, because I'm, I'm not very good at it. Uh, I definitely think his big win was vaporizing the Snake Surfers, but beyond that, High magic is not a simple lore to do, neither is the lore attribute that they get where you get to switch spells out and stuff. So it's th there's a lot on the plate there that I'm definitely going to have to get practice with. But uh, excellent game. I want to again thank Vince Venturella for uh, coming on down and playing with us. Uh, I had a blast. It was a lot of fun. As always, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, otherwise, we will catch you on the next one. Thanks.